Hey guys, welcome back to a new video and a new playlist, which is about testing. In this playlist, we will see what testing is and how to write tests for our Android apps. So what will be covered in this playlist is that in this first video, we'll have some theory about testing, what testing is, how to write good tests and good practices, and then we'll build an app actually and write tests at the same time for that app. And then we will write tests for existing apps that we already built. So we'll see how to write tests for apps that we are building and then for apps that are already built. So let's first understand what testing is. Simply testing refers for verifying if our functions and classes are working as expected in our app. And you've already done testing by yourself. For example, if you are building an app, then you go and click some buttons, making sure that you actually navigate the screens, the view models, everything works fine. And if you implement a function, then you write some logs or print statements to make sure that that function returns or filters or does whatever it should do as expected. But now we'll see how to automate that process because previously you just write some print statements or you manually test your app. And if you just change something in another class or another view model or so, then the app breaks in somewhere else and you can't determine that. So with these test cases that you can write now, you can automate that and ensure that the app is stable all the time. So yeah, write these test cases to ensure that our app works as expected and avoiding getting any bugs or crashes in our app to make sure that our app is stable and get better user experience. So now let's move on and see what types of tests we have in Underwood. We have three main types of tests, which are unit tests, integration tests, and end-to-end -end tests, or UI tests, you can say. And let's see unit tests first. Unit tests simply test a single function or a component or a unit in our app. Let's say we have a use case that, for example, verifies some user input. That's a function that we want to test with a unit test. So it's a single function, or we have a function in our view model that does something simply. We want to unit test that function. So that's a unit test. And these unit tests are usually 70% of our tests. So we write these a lot. And these unit tests themselves are actually divided into two main types of tests, which are local unit tests and instrumented unit tests. So local unit tests are very fast and they don't actually require or access the Android framework. So they don't need context or anything like that. All they actually test is raw Kotlin and Java code. So let's say you want to verify a user input, like a password, you want to make sure that it has a certain types of characters or digits or whatever. So here you don't really need any Android framework components. All you need is raw Kotlin code to test that. So that unit test that tests that function won't actually need an Android device to run because it's just a Kotlin code. So it will only run in the GVM. And as I said, these local unit tests are very fast because they don't need to run in any Android device. And then the second type is instrumented unit tests. So these again are unit tests that test a single function or a single component. You can say single function, a single class, but it's usually just a single function. But these type of tests now actually need the Android resources because since they are instrumented, that means they actually access the Underwood framework. So for example, they need context. This could be testing a DAO in a database. This DAO has a function that gets a certain items in the database, in a room database. So we actually test that function in that DAO that actually gets those items and we ensure that it actually gets the items we expect. So this is a function that we test with a unit test, but it is an instrumented unit test because to access a database, we need context, which is an Underwood framework component. So these are the two types of unit tests we have. As I said, local unit tests, which are fast and they don't access the Underwood framework and they run on the GVM and then instrumented unit tests, which are a little bit slower because they need an Underwood device to run and they access the Underwood framework components and they run on an Underwood device, an emulator or a real Underwood device. So that's for the first type of test, which is unit test. And now let's go for integration tests. And integration tests ensure that different components in our app work together as expected. This could be our screen in our view model. So let's say we click on a button to show an image. So that button is in a screen that we click and then that button sends an event or an action or calls a function in our view model. And then our view model makes sure to load that image or show that image or so. So updates a state that then our screen observes and when that state is true, so that state could be should show image. When that is true, our screen show that image. So the, these are two components. Our screen and our view model work together to show that image. So with an integration test, we make sure that these two works as expected to show the image. So that's an integration test. And this type of test technically also needs the Android resources because here we have a screen 
So that's UI, we need context and all those UIs, all the stuff like fragments, activities, Jetpack Compose, whatever. But of course, we can also create integration tests that don't access the Android framework, like testing a view model with a repository. So these are two classes, but both of them don't access the Android framework because in a clear architecture app, we don't actually pass context or any Android thing to our view model. But in our repository, we technically have application and uh, context and we access databases. But what we can do is create a fake repository. So this fake repository doesn't access those Android resources. So now we have a repository that doesn't have access to any Android resources as well the view model doesn't. So we actually test if that view model with that repository works together with just with an integration test that doesn't need access to any Android framework components. So this could be a function or view model that calls another function in our repository to load data and then the view model filters that data with some business logic or so. So these are two components that again work together and we need to ensure if they work together with an integration test. These make up to 20% of our tests. And then the last type of test that we have are end-to-end -end tests or UI tests. And as the name says, these type of tests actually test the UI. So with an end-to-end -end test, we actually simulate a user behavior like clicking on a search field, typing some text, click on a search button, get some items, some images, pick an image, show it, whatever. This is a user behavior that we can simulate with an end-to-end -end test or a UI test, ensuring that the whole workflow of our user or in our app actually goes as expected and at the same time actually verifying things like if we click on that search field, we type something, we actually make sure that there is actually something typed in our text field. If we click on a button and then we search, we make sure that we actually get some results. And when we pick on image and then we send the image URL to some other screen, we actually make sure that we send the proper and the correct URL and we make sure that the other screen receives the right URL. So this is an end-to-end -end test that simulates a user behavior without a user. But this test, again, is slow and it requires the underweight framework components because that's UI. And now we came to the end of this video in which we just learned what types of tests we have, what are tests in general, and why do we write tests. In the next video, we'll see some practices of writing tests. So see you and bye.